long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Uh, wait. Uh, fast forward? Oh, whew. In the year 2115, life as we know it will completely change. We'll travel to the outer limits of space and time. Blast off in three, two, one! Oh man, Comet. Cleaning all those splatter trays was really hard work. Yeah, it was, Sam. I'm so glad you came to help me. I would have been there until the next century if you didn't help. I don't know if it's just all the hard work or what, but I'm feeling really slow today. I feel it too. It makes me want to sit down and take a break. And do you feel out of breath? I mean, I know I'm out of shape, but I didn't think I was that bad. I'm definitely out of breath. Which is weird, because up here in space, everyone is in perfect shape. I could go on 75 miles up here, and it wouldn't affect me at all. But could you run 75 miles on Earth? Oh, no way. It's only up here in space. Interesting. What? What's interesting? Are you commenting on my lack of ability to run 75 miles? No, no, no. It's not that. I'm just thinking that the way we're feeling may have to do with an alteration in gravity. What kind of alteration? I can't be positive, but it seems like the effects of gravity are increasing. Slowness, the shortness of breath, and even feeling heavy. Whoa. You calling me fat? Uh... No, I'm just saying that I feel like I weigh more today than I did yesterday. Yeah, I guess I do too. So what do you think is causing all this? We can't know for sure without doing some further investigation, but the only two options I can think of are that the space station is no longer rotating at the correct revolutions per minute to match the Earth's orbit, thus causing the gravity to change. Is there a less confusing option? Well, the other option is that the space station has fallen out of orbit completely. What? But, like I said, we can't be sure of anything. Yeah, but this is, n this is not just a minor deal. This is like a starstruck kind of me mega deal. I know, I know. But we just can't jump to conclusions. Let's first find someone we can talk to about this. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, let's talk to someone. It doesn't seem like anyone really knows what's going on here. I know, but we can definitely tell that it, that it is affecting any, everyone else, not just us. Alright, in my science class, we have experiments that we do with this kind of stuff. I don't really feel like doing one of your so-called science projects. Just think out loud with me for a second. Fine. If one variable is affecting all of the subjects, then that force impacts everyone the same. You already lost me. This is happening to all of us. Right. So that means it's not something that can be prevented or controlled by us individually. It has to be an external force. Like gravity. Sure, like gravity. But let's think of other things that could affect all of us. Did everyone eat the same thing yesterday? No, I mean, you and you and I even ate different things. True, but everyone is breathing the same air. Could there be something in the air on the space station? I don't know. I can use my Zapbot to test the density and particles in the air. You can? Okay, Sam. This is not the time to be freaking out about awesome scientific gadgets. Right, right. Sorry. Show me how you can do that thing with your Zapbot. It looks like the air in here is, no is normal. There aren't, any, there aren't any inconsistencies. Okay, so throw that idea out. Is there anything else that is going on that could impact all of us? I really can't think of anything else. Everyone th sleeps in different places. We aren't all in the same place when we're walking around. I really don't know what else c it could be. This is starting to concern me. Do you have a gravity regulation center where we could check the gravity level inside the space station? 
Let me see if I can find it on my zap bot. Are you getting anything? Nope. Hey, you remember Dr. Platt that we talked to earlier about the whole plasma recycler thing? Oh yeah, Dr. Platt! She was great! Maybe she would have a better idea of what is going on. Good idea! Should we go see her? Go? Really? That seems like so much work. What if I just space time her on my zap bot? Space time? What's that? It's the way of the future where you can video chat people face to face. Oh. Hello, Dr. Platt? Do you have any idea idea what's going on right now? Sam and I have some theory has to ha have some theories. We were wondering if you had any had any ideas on why everyone feels different today. Oh hello! How are you today, dears? Feeling heavy, a little slow? Yes, me too. I've been doing some calculations, and I believe that we have fallen exactly 10 degrees out of orbit. This is causing our gravitational pull and rotational velocity to go crazy. If the commander of this space station can't control where we are orbiting, then we could fall out of orbit completely. In the meantime, stop sabotaging your mind with games and sugar. Put your mind to work to come up with the next great contribution to science. What do you mean if the commander of the space station can't control where we're going? You didn't hear? The commander is on vacation at the space station resort. He's not even here. The space station is running completely on autopilot and no one's in control. We better get someone in control soon though, because we're falling more out of orbit every minute. Before long, we'll be lost in space! Uh... I don't feel so good about this. Yeah, me either. How can we not have someone in control of the space station? I don't know. If no one is in control and we keep falling out of orbit, what are we gonna do? You know what, Comet? I'm not worried about it. I'm sorry. Did you just say that you're not worried about it? Yeah, I'm not worried about it. God promises that he is in control and he knows he's got it. How do you, how do you know God God promises to be in control. Does he promise to be in control when, when your space station is falling out of orbit? He promises to be in control all the time. There's a story in the Bible when he was in control of a pretty crazy situation. Crazier than this one? I think so. I just remembered that my brother went back in time to this story once. I recorded his reports in the time log. We can just watch that. Oh. Are we going to use your old-fashioned laptop again? No. I actually uploaded all of my files from my laptop to my data pack, so we can watch it right here. Oh, nice. Let's check it out. Oh, what's up, dude? Oh, you'll never guess what just happened. What happened? I just witnessed the best story ever with my very own eyeballs. Really? Yeah. You've got to tell me awesome. about it. Tell me about it. Okay, so it all started when a guy named the Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. He had slaves, and they were called the and they were called the Israelites because okay. they were from Israel, I think. Okay. Anyway, so the Israelites were trying to get away because they didn't want these slaves. And so the Pharaoh agreed they had to go away. They okay. Could, they were not slaves no more. Did they have anybody leading them away, or were they just running on their own? Well, that would be kind of weird. They're just running. Right, I right, mean, right. They wouldn't know where to go. So, so who was leading them? Moses. Wow. Okay. Moses, he didn't know where to go. He's just a regular human like you and me. Okay. So God told Moses that he will get the Israelites. Uh huh. Out of Egypt. Okay, hold on. So you're telling me that God took Moses to Egypt. Yep. And Pharaoh, yep. because God used Moses, yep. let all the slaves go. So yep. now Moses is leading them. Yep. Un. This is crazy. You've yep. got to keep telling me about this. I've got to know. Next up, what happened mm -hmm. is so they're just running, and if they didn't know where to go, because God can just say, "And you're gonna take a left on Midway Street, and I'll make sure to take a turn on Bayside." Yeah, that doesn't make much sense. So he just made a pear cloud. Okay. Cold during the day. All right. And it was very foggy. So, but could you see the cloud at night? I don't know. You couldn't see the cloud at night, so you used fire. Okay. No people got burned. 
They weren't wearing hazard suits or anything. I, I just don't know how they got burned. Do they use the fire to eat anything or cook anything? S'mores. He he he. No, but really, they didn't use it. Uh, okay. So the s'more thing was a joke. Okay, so they're following fire at nighttime. And no, in the, they're following Moses who's following fire. Okay, who's at nighttime. Which is controlled by God. Yes, at nighttime. And in the daytime, God is using a pillar. Of cloud. For Moses to follow, for the people to follow Moses. Yes. Okay, keep going. I want to know about this. So anyway, then a purple afro ate them all up. No, I'm kidding. That didn't happen. Anyway, so then... They just kept on running down the street. Okay. And they just kept on, actually there weren't no streets, but he just kept on going. When all of a sudden, Pharaoh's men were back. Oh my gosh. They wanted their slaves back because they need slaves. Who's going to polish their shoes or eat their, or make their meat loaf. Okay, so Pharaoh's coming. Yes, then what Pharaoh's happens? coming with thousands of zillions of millions of billions of trillions of bunch of soldiers. That's a lot of soldiers. Of of so they're chasing Moses. And then what? No, they're not chasing Moses. They're chasing the whole Israelites. Which is led by Moses. Who are following the clouds or the fire. Which is controlled by God. Okay, so then what happens? So then they reach a sea. And they can't go past the sea or else, boom, they drown. Right. And the sea was called the Green Sea. Are you sure it was called the Green Sea? Oh, no, it's called the Red Sea. The Red Sea. Okay, I think I've heard of that before. So keep going. So they come to the Red Sea. And, well, they can't go past the Red Sea or else. Drowned. Right. And they can't just turn around and go away or else. Pharaoh's people. <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. Yeah. So what happened? And then God said, Raise your staff over the water. He said, What? And he said, Well, this will raise your staff over the water. Okay. So he raised his staff over the water and. Floop. Wow. The water split? Yeah, the water split in half. No way. Yeah, it was like a grand water canyon. That sounds crazy. Yeah, I know, it was. So then what happened? So then, Moses crossed it, and so did the Israelites. Wow. And it was dry? It was completely dry, not fishy. Except they're all over here, so I mean... Oh. Kind of weird how it wouldn't move if it was just there. Yeah, that sounds crazy. I can't believe water yeah, did that. God so, didn't control that. Though. Yeah, God was in control of that. I think you told me that a minute ago. So what... What happened to Pharaoh and his people? God said, Raise your staff over the water one last time, Moses. And he did. Kablamo, kablamo, fell on them. There never, there's never so many horseshoes, chariot wheels, and armor floating up in the sea. Okay, so well, what you're telling me is the Israelites of Moses crossed the Red Sea in the water canyon, right? No, it wasn't a water canyon. It looked like it. It looked like a water canyon. Okay. And then Pharaoh and all his people are chasing them. So naturally, they try to do the same thing. And then the staff gets held up and kablamo, kaka, kablamo. It's over. Yeah. Wow. And then after that, they were so excited that they did one. What was that? Party! Wow. So there was a party. Party. So God was in control this whole time. Yeah, God could, I mean, it's pretty amazing because I noticed that God could control the Pharaoh, he could control the staff, he could control the Red Sea. The pillar and the, and yeah. the fire? He could control the pillar of Jeez. fire and the pillar of clouds. He could control the chariots and the horses. He could control, crazy. He can control everything. And you got to see all of this. Yeah. Un and actually, you can, And actually, you can also see it right now also. Oh yeah? Yeah. How? God's in control of everything going on right now. Oh, cool, man. That's awesome. I'm glad you got to see that. Yeah. Well. Okay. All anyway, right. I need to go do another adventure. Okay, well, have fun in your time machine. Thank you. I actually don't know where I'm going to go. Well, have fun. Oh, goodness. I'm Be careful. Go, I'm going to go to whoever vented shoelaces and talk to them very carefully. Yeah, tell them hey. See you. Bye. Whoa. If I had been the Israelites, I definitely would have been freaking out. But thankfully, they were able to trust that God was in control. We can see from this history how God promises to be in control. So is God in control of the weather? Of all of us? 
and even of our future? Sure thing. Wow. Do you think he's in control right now? Even though his space station's falling out of orbit and we're getting closer and closer to being lost in space? Absolutely I do. Think about the promises we've talked about so far. God always comes through with those promises. I think we know that when God makes a promise, he keeps it. You're right. So, now that we know that God is in control, what do we do? I think we can pray and ask for his help, just like the Israelites. I think that's a great idea. Dear God, we trust that you are in control. Please help us figure out what to do and help our space station get back in orbit. Amen. Amen. So now what? Well, now I think we should... What was that? I have no idea. Can you see anything? Yeah. Do you see those lights in the sky? Yes. It's an alien invasion. Everyone, take cover. No, that's not an alien invasion. It's a geomagnetic storm. Yeah, like I said, aliens. No, a geomagnetic storm occurs when an electrically charged field or solar wind interacts with Earth's magnetic field. This causes an increase in electric current that pushes out the boundary between the Earth and the field. Bing shi wa ta ha ta ha. That's what you just said. Okay, how can I put this? Think about magnets. When you put two north ends of a magnet together, they repel each other. That's basically what's happening in a geomagnetic storm. So our space station is creating a field, a field that is opposing with the Earth's magnetic field? Exactly! Is that dangerous? No, it's actually pushing us away from Earth and back into orbit. It is? Yeah, we prayed and asked for his help, and he caused something amazing to happen. Whoa. Whoa is right. So, how will we know when we, when we are back into orbit? We'll feel better. Are you still feeling weighed down? No, I feel normal. Me too. And look, the storm is farther away. It looks like we are moving away from it. And now it's gone. I guess that means we're back in orbit. I think we are. We can go double check with Dr. Platt. But I think God kept his promise and kept us safe, even when no one was in control of the space station. That's pretty cool. It's so, it's so cool to know that no matter what is going on, that, that God is in control. It's totally still in areas. I know. Well, hey, let's go talk with Dr. Platt and tell her what we just saw. Sounds like a plan.